nuclear magnetic resonance or simply NMR is a very important and useful technique that is used in fields like chemistry and medicine and this technique comes from nuclear physics. So before we discuss what this technique is and how it actually works, let's recall some basic information about magnetic dipole moments and protons. So what exactly is a magnetic dipole moment and how is one created? So let's imagine a positive electric current that is moving in a counterclockwise direction as shown. So as it moves in the following direction, it creates a loop. And that loop has some amount of area. Let's suppose it's given by A. So basically such a case, such a scenario will create a magnetic dipole moment that will point perpendicular with respect to the area created by our loop of current. So if our loop of current has an area A and the current is given by I, taking the product of I and A gives us the magnitude of the magnetic dipole moment mu. Now we multiplied by the unit vector J hat where J hat basically points in the same direction as our magnetic dipole moment. So for this particular case, because our uh, current is positive and points counterclockwise, our mu, the magnetic dipole moment, will point upward. If the current was negative and moved counterclockwise, the mu will point downward. So we see that any time we have the area A, our mu points perpendicular with respect to the area A. So how exactly can we relate this to protons? Well, protons have a certain amount of positive electric charge. They basically have a charge given by positive 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 coulombs. And the protons can be imagined to spin on their side. So one way that we can model a proton is in the following manner. A proton can be modeled as a sphere that consists of infinitely many such current loops that can be stacked on top of one another. And if we add up all the magnetic dipole moments of all these uh, current loops, that will give us the magnetic dipole moment of the proton as a whole. So basically the proton's magnetic dipole moment is given by mu p. Now in our discussion on nuclear spin and nuclear magnetic dipole moments we said that the magnetic dipole moment of a single individual electron or proton is given by this quantity. So 2.7928 multiplied by the Bohr magneton mu b. Now whenever we take any magnetic dipole moment and we place that magnetic dipole moment inside an external magnetic field, that magnetic field will exert a torque on that magnetic dipole moment that will tend to orient it or align it with the magnetic field lines of that external magnetic field. So let's imagine our magnetic field point in the following direction and let's suppose this direction corresponds to the direction of our magnetic dipole moment. So as soon as we turn on that magnetic dipole moment what happens is this magnetic dipole moment <coughs> will exert a torque on this or this magnetic field will exert a torque on this magnetic dipole moment and will orient that magnetic dipole moment along the same direction as the magnetic field lines of that external magnetic field. And as it rotates whatever this object is it will change that object's energy and this will become important in just a moment. So once again, whenever a magnetic dipole moment is placed into an external magnetic field, it will feel a torque that will tend to align it with our external magnetic field. So let's imagine that our object is the proton. So when we don't have that magnetic field, the proton simply looks like this. So we have the proton and it basically spins, all that positive charge spins and creates a magnetic dipole 
dipole moment. As soon as we turn on that external magnetic field as shown in this diagram, this begins to align itself. The proton's magnetic dipole moment will begin to align itself, but it will not align itself exactly with the magnetic field lines, and that's because of our angular momentum of that proton. So we can imagine that when our magnetic field line is found in this direction, basically when it points out of the board, what happens is our magnetic dipole moment of our proton tends to orient itself with the same direction. So in this particular case, as it's incoming, we have our magnetic field lines point outward and they increase for a little while. And so our magnetic dipole moment tends to move outward, but as it continues moving, it decreases, so then it moves back inward. And eventually, notice in this location, our magnetic field lines point into the board, so that means it will tend to orient inward, and so the entire motion will be around some axis. So we can imagine that our magnetic dipole moment of the proton will process about an axis we call the precession, the precession axis. And the frequency or the oscillation of our precession is known as the Larmor frequency. So once again, the magnetic dipole moment will try its best to align with the magnetic field lines, but it will not align exactly because of our angular momentum of that proton. Instead, it will process around an axis, and its frequency of precession is commonly known as the Larmor frequency. So, how exactly is all this related to nuclear magnetic resonance? Well, basically, let's imagine we have a certain nucleus. Let's take the simplest nucleus as an example. Let's take the hydrogen atom with a single proton in the nucleus and no neutrons. So, if we take the simplest simplest nucleus, we basically have a single proton in the nucleus and as a result of the spin of that electric charge that is positive, that will create a magnetic dipole moment as shown in this diagram. Now once we turn on that external magnetic field, let's suppose that points upward in this direction shown by the blue magnetic field lines, the nuclei energy level will split into two to as a result of the two different possible spins of that proton. Remember, just like electrons have two different possible spins, our nuclei, specifically the protons, also have two possible spins. And as a result of those two possible spins, when we turn on that magnetic field, one spin will orient parallel with respect to our magnetic field, and the other spin will tend to orient our magnetic dipole moment of the nuclei anti-parallel in the opposite direction, 180 degrees in the other way as shown in this diagram. So one will align parallel as shown in this diagram. This is known as spin up. And the other one will al align anti-parallel. That is known as spin down. So if we look at the spin up, what basically happens is the spin up tends to naturally orient itself along the same direction. But what happens in this case, because it orients in the opposite direction because of the opposite spin, we have an increase in energy. So this loses some energy, it becomes more stable, this gains some energy, becomes less stable because it travels a greater distance from this initial position. So here travels this way, it loses energy, and here travels this way, it gains energy. So the spin up has an energy that has decreased by an amount taking the product of our mu of our proton, the magnetic dipole moment, as well as the total magnetic field given by B naught. And we place a negative because it it means our nucleus loses energy, it becomes more stable, and so it's lower in energy.
Now, on the other hand, the spin down increases in energy by the same amount, but now the sign is a positive. So when we didn't have a magnetic field, this nuclei, this proton, basically had one energy state. As, so, as soon as we turn down that magnetic field, what happened is one oriented this way, it also can orient this way, and so we have a split in energy. So we have a spin up that is lower in energy shown here and a spin down that is higher in energy shown here. And the difference in the energies of these two quantum states, of these two energy levels, is simply given by taking the difference in these two quantities. This minus this gives us 2 multiplied by mu p multiplied by b. So this is our change in energy between this and this state. So, what exactly is nuclear magnetic resonance? So, nuclear magnetic resonance is a powerful technique that uses all these principles to actually examine the type of compound or molecule that we are dealing with. So, how exactly does this work? Well, let's suppose we take a sample of, in of interest, some unknown molecule, and we place it inside an external magnetic field. Now once we place it inside that external magnetic field, we basically allow some type of electromagnetic wave to hit that particular nucleus of our atom of our molecule. So this is known as the radio frequency. So a, a radio frequency pulse is emitted and hits the sample. The radio frequency pulse is simply a type of electromagnetic electromagnetic radiation. Now, if the frequency of that pulse, of that electromagnetic wave, is just the right frequency, what happens is when that electromagnetic wave collides with the nucleus of our atom, it will basically gain this nucleus found in the lower in energy spin up state, will gain enough energy and transition and jump to the higher quantum state that is at the higher energy level. So if the frequency is just right, it will gain just the right amount of energy and will jump this amount of energy. And when it transitions, not only does it gain energy, it also changes in frequency. And this change in frequency is known as the chemical shift of our atom. Now different atoms have different chemical shifts. If we know what the chemical shift of each atom is, we can place our unknown compound into that machine and determine all the change in frequency values and that will tell us the types of atoms that are found inside that unknown molecule. So basically, because just the right frequency is required for our nuclei to jump and transition between states, this is known as resonance. And that's exactly why we call it nuclear magnetic resonance. So we turn on that magnetic field, the nuclear magnetic dipole moment of the nucleus aligns itself. When we point that radio frequency pulse at our nucleus, if the frequency is just right, it will gain enough energy and will resonate. And so that's why we call it nuclear magnetic resonance. The question is, how exactly do we calculate how much energy our nuclei has to gain and what the change in frequency is? So this is given by this equation. So we can imagine that our incident radio frequency pulse is a single photon. Then that single photon carries an energy given by H times F, where F is the frequency and H is our Planck's constant. And because our nuclei must gain exactly this amount of energy, which is equal to this quantity, we can equate these two values to one another. So we have H times F multiplied by 2 times the magnetic dipole moment of that nuclei, in this case a single proton, multiplied by the total magnetic field B. 
So this equation gives us the amount of energy required by radio frequency photon to give the nuclei enough energy to jump between energy quantum states. And if we know what these quantities are, we can readily calculate what the frequency change is. And our change in frequency of the nuclei is commonly known as the chemical shift. So basically in chemistry we can use this nuclear magnetic resonance technique to determine the types of compounds and molecules that we are dealing with. Now we can also apply this nuclear magnetic resonance technique into medicine and that is known as MRI. We're going to discuss that in the next lecture.